everybody and welcome back. This is the second session in our panel entitled Linguistic and Cultural Identities of the Wider Europe Within and Across Borders, Disciplines and Practices. Our second panel has a special theme, has a special topic, and here it is up on the screen. We're going to focus on new minorities, immigrants as a new cultural identity in Europe. We are the European Network of Intercultural Education Activities, as you can see on the slide. We are a group of collaborators, colleagues and collaborators, interested in the topics, in the issues, or the debate, if you would, in intercultural education activities, as the name says. And we are also looking at both from the research perspective and from the perspective of applied or educational studies. Before we carry on with our presenters and panelists, let me give the floor to our president, Professor Giacomo Ferrari from the University of Vercelli in Italy, to give us a few more details about this second session. Yes, thank Giacomo, you very much. Just, just very, very few words to characterize the uh, subject of uh, this afternoon. Uh, as you probably, everybody must know, Europe has become, since few decades, the preferred destination of immigrants from south of the Mediterranean or from even farther from eastern countries and cultures. Um, the reasons for this movement of people and peoples uh, are complex and due to a mix of complex historical, social, economical uh, reasons and they create a pressure on the European community. Uh, at present, if one should sort of classify this kind of new minorities, one should uh, include uh, migrants of two types. The migrants coming from uh, the end of a colonial experience, so people as in England, as in France, but also migrants coming from almost the same countries, not for, in, for colonial reasons, or for the end of the colonial era, but just for under the pressure of economic, or bad economic reasons, and of sometimes political uh, persecution. Uh, from uh, Eastern Europe also, the same reasons brought into Europe, into Western Europe, people who were, I mean, it's difficult not to consider extra outside of the community, European community, but for just a political reason up to a given time, and culturally almost the same, the same, uh, the same people, but with the, sometimes, in few cases, also the same languages, but uh, with different traditions uh, behind them. Uh, What's the, char the character of these minorities, the, these new minorities, the distribution of the different sites? And in some, but not all cases, uh, in a strong cultural specificity with respect to the, uh, the surrounding majorities, let's say. Uh, what's the position of the European community on that? Well, the European community strongly supports and imposes legal immigration, so a limit between a, diff a borderline, border between uh, legal immigration and un illegal immigration. But for what concerns the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, say, the how to cope with these people, um, it says that the European Community is promoting European cooperation to develop common approaches and exchanges of information at the European level to obtain, to obtain what? Integration. Integration is a word that has no uh, stronger uh, meaning. I mean, uh, no, uh, no specific policy is defined. And uh, however, we are all aware that uh, la language is probably the first element integration. But for these reasons, many countries, uh, including Italy, has, have um, imposed to immigrants who want to spend a period longer than three years 
do pass an examination of Italian, for instance, for Italy and so on, but this doesn't solve, obviously, the problem. And uh, especially because the immigrants themselves are aware that language is very important, and they tend to elaborate personal solutions to such problems as we will hear. So I think that the panelists will present, uh, how to say, the, the different processes of integration, and different uh, methods and different uh, ways of uh, facing this problem and to, uh, to uh, solve, not to solve that really, but how to try to uh, minimize differences and uh, sometimes uh, uh, bad episodes. Please. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. On that note, can I please introduce our three panelists for this afternoon's session? We have Dr. Monika Kopitowska from Woods, University of Woods in Poland, who will be our first presenter. Uh, then we have Dr. Alcina Souza from the University of Madeira in Portugal, who will be presenting second. And finally, Dr. Monica Mosca from the University of Vercelli in Italy, who would be our third panelist. Um, the panelist, the concept essentially of the whole panel, as um, uh, Giacomo just introduced, is really to sort of present main ideas, key points of what we are trying to say. And we would really like to invite and encourage members of the pan of the of the audience to take part and then uh, take part in the discussion that we would like to initiate afterwards. The discussion, of course, will be moderated and led by uh, our discussant, uh, Professor Giacomo Ferrari. Without further ado, shall I give the floor to our first panelist, Monica. Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. Monika Kopitowska from the University of Woods in uh, Poland, who would present a very interesting and rather challenging sort of issue, a very, very interesting topic, presenting otherness, the image of minorities and immigrants in Estonian and Polish mainstream news media. Proszę bardzo. Oh, dziękuję. Thank you. Um, the, the project itself uh, um, um, is an initiative that I started with my colleague uh, from Tallinn University, uh, Kaya Tampere. She's the director of the Institute of uh, Communication then, with the idea of having a project that will be both, well, in a way, multidisciplinary, because we are uh, combining two kinds of um, or two approaches, or two methodological approaches, but also that would be a um, comparative study, uh, a, a study comparing the situation in Estonia and in Poland, um, which are quite close, I mean, uh, located uh, 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 closely to each other, um, but then to see whether there are similarities and differences uh, and what these similarities and differences, where they come from. Uh, the project proved to be uh, a big challenge uh, for several reasons uh, that I'm going to talk about. And basically what I'm, what I'm going to, uh, uh, to show, I would say, are just, it's just the beginning of the project. Uh, and these are some preliminary, uh, um, either not conclusions, just just what we what we think or how we are going to direct uh, our further uh, research. We've been talking today a lot about uh, the importance of well education and then uh, law uh, uh, and then communication. And I think there is the, the, another very important notion uh, uh, when it comes to the process of European integration and identity, namely discourse. Um, and that discourse in its various dimensions, uh, uh, including the institutional dimension of discourse, namely media discourse. And that's something I'm going to talk about. Before I start, I would like to I would like to show you only a piece uh, um, of a documentary that recently caused an outrage in Poland uh, and uh, uh, started or triggered off heated debates about racism in Poland. The documentary was. Um, 
broadcast. Unfortunately, I can't check it all the to twój głos jest zawsze słyszalny. Jesteś u celu. Cały świat jest w twoim zasięgu. Ty jesteś w T-Mobile, w sieci największych możliwości. In 11 days' time, Europe's biggest festival of football kicks off. But just how safe will some fans be? I'm concerned that they will be targeted by, by racists and fascists and, and anti-Semites in, in Poland and in Ukraine. European football's governing body says it has zero tolerance of racism. The stuff going on in the football stadiums is atrocious and it's embarrassing and I think it embarrasses the whole country. Panorama spent a month in Poland and Ukraine and tonight we show the matches where black players and fans are routinely abused. What kind of things do they say to you? You know, bad words like you're a monkey or something like that. The terraces where fans give fascist salutes. The ground where supporters are beaten for the colour of their skin. We were supporting the whole team. We were supporting the whole team. Just horrifying, you know. The families of two Black England players have already said they won't go. Tonight, a former captain condemns UEFA's choice of host nations. Would you recommend the families to travel to Euro 2012? No chance. Stay at home, watch it on TV. Don't even risk it. UEFA has a vision, a vision of a united European family of football. This June, the family of football has chosen to pay a visit to Eastern Europe. With a hundred years of football history, they've got some of the most passionate fans in the world. They've got the stadiums. They've got the spectacle. But they've also got a big problem. A reputation for violence and racism. So does the family of football really know what it's letting itself in for? I've spent a month watching league matches across these two countries to find out. My first stop is Łódź, a city the size of Birmingham. It's not a host city for Euro 2012, but I've been told that to see the dark heart of Polish football, I should come and watch the Łódź derby. LKS versus Witzel. For this match, visiting fans have been banned from the LKS stadium. It's just an hour before kickoff. LKS fans start running battles with the police. We just want to get them in the stadium. Well, it seems a lot of them definitely came there for a fight, but we've no one to fight because the away fans are banned from the match that turns on the police. Decided to target us for a little while there, and throwing stones and firecrackers at us. Seems like anyone's a tough. Actually, and the, the rest of the and the rest of the movie is about anti-Semitic symbolism uh, and uh, basically attitude, anti-Semitic and racist attitude. Uh, there are dialogues. I mean the. the uh, as you see the interviews with uh, either uh, football players or other people, the representatives of the Jewish community in Poland who claim that this is an anti-Semitic and racist country. So the question is, is it? Uh, and uh, are we sort of close to, uh, uh, um, to migrants? Because the, the, the presentation is about immigrants. 
uh, or are we hostile towards uh, um, towards minorities, uh, ethnic and national minorities that we have? Uh, and there was, as I've said, the idea of our project to see how minorities, uh, the existing minorities, uh, and uh, how the, the incoming uh, um, migrants, uh, the incoming people, you could say new minorities, uh, are represented by the media. Because the idea obviously is that media, if you think of media discourse, uh, it's both uh, constituted socially and constitutive. So on the one hand, it reflects the situation as it is uh, in a given culture or in a given community. On the other hand, it contributes to uh, cost constructing these uh, uh, social reality. That's why we actually considered critical discourse analysis as a per to be a perfect framework to, uh, to see, uh, to look at this representation of minorities and migrants uh, in the two countries. Uh, uh, relying to a large extent on uh, uh, the, the, the frameworks, the methodological frameworks by Furklaff and Vodak, um, and, uh, uh, and von Dijk, and as I've said, assuming that discourse, media discourse should both reflect uh, and co-construct uh, this social uh, reality. And another concept that uh, we find important is intertextuality. So how the present media discourse refers back to, uh, well, other discourses that were previously produced or discourses that exist uh, simultaneously, like political discourse uh, uh, among uh, others. Uh, again, that, that's another uh, uh, assumption uh, taken um, uh, or assumption within critical discourse analysis approach uh, um, that is discourse, uh, as I've said, co-constructing situations, institution, institutions and social structures and at the same time being uh, uh, again, constructed by these situations, institu institutions, and social structures. So this dialectic uh, uh, relationship and everything obviously existing within uh, culture and uh, ideology. The key uh, concept, uh, one of the key concepts studied within critical discourse analysis is obviously power, power relations, and how discourse reflect and how discourse co-construct uh, power relations within uh, I would say at different levels. There is ethnic majorities or national majorities versus minorities, cultural majorities, minorities, uh, then uh, gender relations or class relations. And uh, so our study is you know, situated within uh, a such, uh, sorry, within such an um, approach. Uh, with power relations being uh, the, the key uh, concept that's being studied, and then the assumption that discourse constitutes society and culture, that it's ideological, that it does ideological work, that it's also historical. So this historical context, uh, as we have already discovered, uh, is something uh, important as to uh, or in the process of constructing a particular or representation of particular uh, ethnic or national uh, groups. Um, and, and discourse as a form of social action. Uh, um, um, the, the movie I started with, uh, as I've said, or the documentary I started with, it caused an outrage and it caused uh, a uh, set of discussions, and not only in Poland, I mean, about specifically in Poland, we had our authorities comment on that, I mean, Polish government comment on that, but then also, uh, uh, I think around the world, I got uh, uh, dozens of emails uh, from my colleagues from Africa, for example, asking me whether it's true that the situation is the way it's presented in that documentary. Of course, the documentary itself, I think, is a fascinating uh, uh, piece of discourse to study in terms of selectiveness and in terms of visual and linguistic um, strategies used to create uh, a certain representation of uh, Polish uh, uh, people. 
Uh, and I think selectiveness uh, uh, is an important thing here because like, when we were discussing this thing uh, among my colleagues, we said, okay, we can't say that acts of violence, uh, uh, we can't say they don't exist, they do exist. Uh, we can't say that uh, the kind of graffiti that is shown here does not exist, it does. But this is not what the whole Polish reality is like. I mean, and even the, the people they decided to interview, they, uh, they interviewed the representative of the Jewish community who said we are anti-Semitic. But on the other hand, a lot is done to support Jewish community in Poland and many representatives of that community are perfectly happy with that or satisfied with that. So I think selectiveness and all these visual and linguistic strategies uh, are an important point here, as they are in the case of every, represent every representation or construction of uh, uh, representation. We decided to look at the mainstream uh, media um, in Estonia and in Poland, um, and for technical reasons, we decided to look at the press. Um, uh, Estonian daily newspapers and then Polish uh, uh, daily newspapers uh, collecting from July 2011 to March 2012. Uh, and um, uh, the way we did it, we actually later on uh, raised, of course, ideological, um, sorry, uh, methodological challenges because the way we wanted to do it, we said, okay, we will try to look for, uh, we will use such keywords as uh, minority, immigrants, migrants, and then look for all the articles related to these. Um, however, uh, what it, what it uh, led to was that when we looked at these 2000 uh, something articles, and uh, very often the words, um, um, immigrants, uh, I will talk more about it in a while, uh, in Polish newspapers, for example, was used to talk about Polish immigrants in the, in the UK. Mm -hmm. So that was the main, actually, it was the main theme, and how unjustly we are treated as immigrants in the UK. So our perspective on what the situation is like there. Um, so that's, that's, that's our data. I will come back to these methodological challenges. As I said, we decided to, because Kaya is in the Institute of Communication and then uh, she does a lot with content analysis, so we decided to actually combine content analysis with discourse analysis and also combine, well, quantitative and qualitative uh, um, analysis in our um, um, project. Uh, in addition to this typical content analysis, used in media analysis, uh, at the level of language, we, we started with keyness, corpus linguistics, uh, and with, with keyness, that is, looking at the words um, uh, using uh, corpus linguistic uh, methodology, looking at the words that are unusually, you might say, frequent in text, so salient uh, in a given text, because they tell you what the text basically um, is about. Then, uh, but then it was just a starting point because you look at these words and then look at the context in which these words are used. Uh, I mean, just take the word migrant or immigrant. Then, as I've said, in the Polish text we find immigrant mostly used in the context of Polish immigrants in the UK. That was the highest, um, the, the, the highest of occurrence of, of, of the item. But then also semantic vectors. That is, uh, semantic vectors is the tool that shows you what other concepts are mentioned uh, in the environment of the concept you study. So what, um, what else is mentioned, let's say, uh, in, the, uh, in the article describing um, um, the Roma people in Poland, let's say, or the Jewish, uh, uh, the situation of the Jewish people in a given uh, region. So what other concepts are in close vicinity, uh, if you like? And then concordances, which on the other hand shows like the, well, the, 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 the grammatical or the, the, the collocation uh, uh, of a 
language. Uh, so whether these are illegal immigrants or Polish immigrants, uh, we decided to look at uh, these two. But then as you normally uh, do in uh, CDA-oriented analysis, um, we, we studied these three, I would say, levels. The lexical level, of course, where, where we looked at concordances, uh, how you name people and how you name the practices of these people. So naming and reference, lexical analysis, but then also agency and transitivity, whether they are presented as active or as passive, and what if they are presented as doing something, what kind of actions these are. Are these verbal actions or, uh, uh, let's say, violent physical actions, uh, etc.? Metaphors and metonymies, a uh, huge area basically of studies when you look at immigration, <coughs> the concept of uh, uh, immigration. But then also implicitness and explicitness to what extent certain judgments are in conveyed implicitly and to what extent they are conveyed explicitly. And also yet another level is the, 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 the images, I mean the, the, the visual uh, uh, analysis that, that was of, of press uh, photographs. Um, when you look at well, part of content analysis concerning uh, Estonian uh, Estonian press, they distinguished uh, on the basis of their analysis uh, the following what they call minorities. I will come back to this issue: Asian people, Roma people, Jewish people, disabled uh, people, Muslim, gay, lesbian, sexual minorities, black people, and Russian uh, uh, minority, with the number of. Uh, um, uh, times the, 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 um, it, with the number of articles uh, where these groups uh, were mentioned or devoted to, to these groups. Um, and there were some, uh, and there are, uh, when you see, we'll see in a while the Polish uh, side, uh, there are some interesting um, uh, differences. Jewish people, for example, in Estonia well presented uh, only in, in a positive way, so that there's a very positive representation of Jewish people, which is not always the case in, in the Polish media. Russian minority is a big, uh, that's, that, that's the, 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 the group that actually has um, attracted uh, the highest or the biggest uh, attention there. And, and is presented in, um, either a negative way, and if not in a negative way, then in the context of problems related to common educational policy, or basically, uh, well, educational and social policy related issues. Uh, so, it, actually, when it comes to Russian minority, here you could see the, well, the tension and probably the, this negative image was most uh, explicit uh, also. Uh, then what was what was what was interesting and what I, what was also the case uh, in, in in Polish uh, uh, media? Um, very often talking about uh, these minorities, especially Asian people or or, or African people, uh, our media sort of quoted uh, or relied on other Western media and. Uh, um, so, very often, uh, which is another methodological issue. I mean, what do you what do you look at if you have, let's say, African minority and it appears in the Polish text? Do you look at African minority in Poland, or do you look at what Polish media write about African minority in Europe? That was our methodological issue, or um, because we very often had articles um, in, in in the Polish. Um, in the Polish press, for example, criticizing Belgian attitude towards um, um, people from Africa or immigrants from Africa, uh, Belgian or, 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 or French attitude towards Muslims. So there are many articles actually uh, commenting, which was quite interesting because it was like commenting on the situation of immigrants in Europe as if but from the side, we are like not part of it because we wouldn't treat them in this way. 
the, the same actually situation could be observed in, 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 in Estonian media. So then, so that was the first, that is the first challenge. What do we, what do we look at? I mean, because you have to filter out all these articles if you want to concentrate only on uh, uh, a given uh, ethnic or national group in, 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 in the country you are looking at. So whether you look at uh, how it's represented in general or how, how what, it, what it says about people in your country. Then another interesting thing was about the concept of, of minority uh, uh, itself. When you look at the list of, for example, Polish, uh, the official list of national and ethnic minorities in Poland, you find the following minorities. Germans, Ukrainians, Belarusians, Lithuanians, Slovaks, but you have Jews, you have Roma people, uh, uh, Armenians, etc. But um, at the same time, obviously, we have a relatively big population of Vietnamese people who are not treated as a minority because what, what is, I think, at the basis of this definition is some historical um, context, I guess. And if you look at the Ukrainians and media descriptions of Ukrainians, for example, which are uh, negative very often, uh, you have to think of two kinds of Ukrainians. I mean, Ukrainians that are the, the, the minority that was constituted, or constituted itself like over the years throughout history, and Ukrainians who are coming as illegal immigrants uh, to work in Poland. So that's, 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 that's another issue. Um, if, you, if, if you look at previous studies of hate speech uh, in Poland, there is a, uh, the, the, the most recent uh, uh, is by uh, Kowalski and Tula, um, and they actually distinguish these five groups of affected by hate speech, Jews, Germans, Ukrainians, Belarusians, and Lithuanians. Hate speech in the media. Uh, I think there are some methodological, uh, methodological problems with this study, but these are the groups they mentioned. So we also wanted to see, I wanted to see, was it true that the representation of Jews in the media, mainstream media, is so negative, or Germans is so negative? And actually, uh, um, so the, the groups that uh, you could say I distinguish, or you could distinguish that we looked at, were Asian people, uh, uh, immigrants, uh, mostly Vietnamese, actually, their the, the representation being pretty negative, I'll show you in a while. Then Roma people, Turkish people, Jewish people, um, uh, Muslim, very, very rarely, African <coughs> people, Russians, Ukrainians, Belarusians, and then obviously you could look at the two non-ethnicity or non-nationality related um, um, groups. If you look at the, the concept of minority itself, I mean the, the concordances, uh, the collocations, uh, uh, the most frequent one will be Polish minorities, uh, as I've said, in UK, but also in Lithuania, for example. Then the concept of minority rights is discussed, or minority status, or national and ethnic minorities. But German minority is quite frequently mentioned, or Silesian minority, Belarusian minority, Lithuanian minority, and homosexual minority, that's, that's another uh, frequently used phrase and, and theme. Um, if you look at immigrants, again, Polish immigrants, that's the most uh, often raised uh, issue. Uh, uh, but then illegal immigrants, that's the second most frequent uh, collocation. Or immigrants from behind the eastern border. Or oh, metaphors also, uh, immigrants flood into a wave of immigrants, so this typical flood water mm -hmm. metaphors to talk about immigrants. But then integration of immigrants, uh, and then, interestingly, if you look at uh, transitivity patterns, you will frequently find uh, immigrants as the object of arrest, so immigrants were arrested, or immigrants are suspected, or immigrants were taken to custody, uh, uh, etc. Uh, two more slides. Uh, I mentioned Jews. Uh, I don't think the representation is only negative. Uh, uh, they appear, if you again look at semantic vectors in the context, uh, the articles are related to history, culture, also to problems, yes. I mean, articles on problems with Jews, 
do appear like conflicts over property or religious practices or acts of, uh, but then acts of devastation of Jewish uh, property. I didn't really find any explicit or many cases of explicit uh, uh, negative representation of Jews. If it is, it's rather implicit, like religious practices that cause, let's say, slaughtering animals that causes legal problems or something uh, like that. But very often, I mean, there are many positive things uh, about what is being done uh, uh, to uh, um, to develop or whatever the, the, the Jewish culture, revive Jewish culture in Poland. Roma people are presented mostly, and that's the same in uh, Estonia and in Poland in a negative way, in the context of illegal squatting or violence against Poles, criminal activities, but. Also, a positive thing, uh, educational and, 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 oh. and cultural project. And finally, well, Vietnamese, uh, um, um, uh, many articles on Vietnamese producing marijuana. Uh, and so, th this description of Vietnamese is very negative. Uh, um, um, money laundering, illegal trades. Um, but then also, uh, as other minorities uh, or other groups of immigrants, in, in connection with abolition law that was introduced in, in, in January, allowing them to legalize uh, their status. So to conclude, uh, the uh, the challenges that we that we found was how you define minority versus migrants. Uh, and uh, well, we have these new minorities in the title. Can we treat? migrants as new minorities? Um, that's the question. Then our minority migrants uh, in different countries. Uh, that's, um, in the case of Polish media, that's I'd say the, the most frequent preoccupation is actually our people in UK, uh, mostly. And then this perspective of kind of uh, placing yourself sort of on the side and criticizing the <coughs> European Union for unjust or other countries in the EU and you as a whole unjust treatment of uh, immigrants. Um, historical context, uh, which um, uh, I didn't have time to talk about it, but explains to uh, a large extent differences in the representation. Let's say, for example, Jews uh, uh, or Russians uh, in Estonia and in Poland that you have to take into consideration. Contents from other media that is actually taking or quoting or uh, uh, commenting on articles published in other, usually Western uh, European uh, media. Explicitness, implicitness, I think if we have negative representation of certain groups, it's much more often uh, done implicitly and in less straightforward way than it used to be. Um, and maybe we could also say that what, what if someone says that they are not represented properly enough, maybe it's not only about negative representation but more about writing about them and writing about issues concerning uh, immigrants, so making certain issues salient and other issues less salient or non-existent. Thank you. Mm -hmm.